Since I took office, we've attracted a half a trillion dollars, $497 billion in private investment in American manufacturing, both here and around the world. It's historic. And it's Bidenomics in action. I'm not here to declare victory on the economy. I'm here to say we have a plan that's turning things around quickly, but we have a lot more work to do. There it is. President Biden in South Carolina yesterday touting his plan for the economy, the White House dubbing it Bidenomics. Uh, the president making his economic case in the deep red states, saying his policies add jobs in GOP states. The president saying Republican-led states are gaining factory jobs because of economic measures he pushed through Congress despite stiff GOP opposition. We'll bring in Matt Schlapp, the CPAC chairman, and Jim McLaughlin, a pollster for McLaughlin & Associates and a pollster for the Trump 2024 campaign. Also back on set with us is president of Marathon Public Affairs, Jeanette Hoffman. We appreciate everyone being here today. Matt, I will start with you, sir. Bidenomics, is this really a good strategy when you think of Americans still struggling just to afford gas, to pay their electric bill, to buy groceries? Um, numbers are one thing, but when you, when you get down to the household, um, Bidenomics, does that work, and what is it? Look, uh, he, he's got to do something. I'll let Jim, the great pollster, go through the numbers, but I mean, he's really in the tank. And the problem is with inflation, which Biden is responsible for, refueling by super juicing the economy with all these pieces of legislation he's now touting. Uh, inflation is that hidden tax. It's that thief in the night. Americans actually have less take-home pay. They reversed the trend under Trump uh, than they had before Joe Biden had these terrible policies. And look where Joe Biden is going. He's going to all these states that matter in the general election or matter in the Republican primary. He's so cocky and deluded and unaware of what's going on in reality that he thinks he is a big voice in the South Carolina political conversation or the Georgia political conversation. So he's, he's doing this aggressive uh, step forward to try to get, get press uh, in these states that are talking about Trump versus DeSantis and the Republican primary. The funny thing is he's the president of the United States. The idea that he has to kind of enter into the turf of the conversation about the Republican primary uh, in order to get coverage just shows you He's in a pretty desperate political situation, and the economics speak for itself. It's yeah. all bad for everybody, and we all know it. And you know what? Republicans actually aren't so shy of using the term Bidenomics. They just obviously have a different definition for it. We can show you that. This is House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Uh, he sent out this tweet saying, Bidenomics is a bust. It does nothing to utilize the resources God has blessed America with. What we need is a long-term plan to make China and India dependent on American natural gas. It shouldn't be a Republican or Democrat plan. It should be an American plan. So, Jeanette, when you look at this from a marketing perspective, talk to me about how Bidenomics could potentially backfire on the president. Yeah, I think that you're seeing a White House that's very detached from reality here. To think uh, attaching Biden's name to the worst economy since Jimmy Carter could be a good thing for him is absolutely ridiculous. And I think, like you said, Emma, you're going to see Republicans turning this back on to Joe Biden and using this in campaign material. Bidenomics, is your family suffering because of Joe Biden's economy? Stop Bidenomics. Put an end to Bidenomics. You know, I also heard someone say Bidenomics is when everyone connected to Joe Biden pro profits, but mm -hmm. American families suffer more. So I think this is a terrible term for the White House. I think just because Joe Biden says something doesn't make it true. And I think the American families who are suffering under Joe Biden's economy know that. Well, you set it up perfectly for former President Trump. Weighed in, and here's what he had to say about Bidenomics. I will end the disaster known as Bidenomics. He doesn't even know. Two weeks ago, they used a term. He said, what is that? Now he's, he likes the term, I guess. You know what it means? It means destruction for our company. That's, that's destruction for our country. Jim McLaughlin, final thoughts to you, sir. Oh, I think he's crazy to be talking about Bidenomics because he gets some of his worst numbers. His disapproval rating overall is about 56%. 
But when you say the economy overall, it goes up over 60 percent. And then when it comes to the issue of inflation, he's got a 70 percent disapproval rating. And by the way, I think one of the reasons why he goes to a state like South Carolina, it's out of weakness. And the people around him know how weak he is. They're worried about a Democratic primary. And they, you notice the first person in the South Carolina speech that he acknowledged James Clyburn, the political, the congressman from South Carolina. He's doing this out of weakness. He's not doing this out of strength. All right, interesting points here. We appreciate the time of Matt Schlapp, Jim McLaughlin, and Jeanette Hoffman. Thank you all. Enjoy your weekend.